Welcome to Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. My name is Chris Meyer, your host, and I'm here with my co-host, Haley Westrich. Haley, how are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing? Doing good. Okay. Have, I, I heard you maybe you're going to get sawed in half, or maybe you already got sawed in half, or we yeah, don't know. Yeah, apparently so. We don't so know. Stay if you, tuned. So if um, we did an episode a couple of weeks ago with uh, Brad oh, Ross, wow. and so there was talk that maybe she was going to get on stage and yes. get sawed in half. Um, we got some great guests coming up. We do. We've got the Peterson family with us today, so super excited about that. That is exciting. Yes. And I think I've heard they're like some of the most eligible bachelorettes, maybe in Branson. Maybe it, be. Uh, maybe it's a rumor. I don't know. We'll don't find know. out. Yes. We'll find out. Um, here's the here's my, my questions. These are dumb questions or things that make you go, hmm. And, and so if you don't like these, tell us. But so far, the reaction has been super awesome. So we're going to keep doing them until we run out. Um, here's the first question. Did Adam and Eve have belly buttons? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know, but could they have had them? I, I something know. to think about. Um, here's my next question. I'm getting a little political on this one. Why did the city of Branson spend over $100,000 per parking spot on their parking lot in downtown Branson? Hmm. hmm. I don't know oh. about that one. <laughs> um... Why are they called stands when they are made for sitting? You know, that's that's, think about mm -hmm. that. And why is it called after dark when it's really after light? That's, that's a good one. Uh, the, uh, the English language is kind of strange. Kind of crazy. It is kind of strange. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the thought-provoking one. Um, and once again, we're encouraging you to get around the dinner table and talk about these thought-provoking questions. If you had to teach something, someone one thing, what would you teach them? If mm. you had to teach somebody one thing. I mean, biggest lesson would just be like spiritual lessons. I mean, that would be kind of the primary, I guess. But I, I think that's a great mm -hmm. answer, and I would probably agree with you. If you had to just only teach one thing, like what's the most important thing, and that would be Following eternal Christ. life. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a good one. Um, so folks, if you are thinking about coming to Branson, we would encourage you to go to ibranson.com. They're our sponsor. Be sure to uh, check them out. You can get all your show and attraction tickets as well as lodging through them. And we're going to be back in just a moment with our guest, so stay tuned. The award-winning Quality Inn West. It's the closest hotel in Branson to Silver Dollar City and near Branson's IMAX complex. Relax in the indoor pool or hot tub. The hotel offers relaxing queen rooms and two-room suites. Enjoy each morning's free hot breakfast inside or out on the patio. For more information or to make reservations, call 800-443-8694. Welcome back to Play Branson. We are here with Ellen and Katie Peterson. So you guys are with the Peterson Family Bluegrass Band. Yes. And so it's great to have you guys here. You are our first official bluegrass people. Yay. Well, we are excited. <laughs> yeah, excited I can see that yes. excitement. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I'm excited to have you guys. And, and I, I, I've known you guys for a long time, mm -hmm. although I'm not officially your Facebook friend, but oh, Ellen, I'm <laughs> Ellen, she's Means Facebook so friend. Much. <laughs> so been real friends. <laughs> so here's the deal. We need to, we need to get to know you better because that's what this show is about. So kind of give us a little bit of your history and how you got to Branson, and then we'll go from there. Well, we grew up um, moving around quite a bit with our dad being in the Air Force. So until 10 years ago, we were doing that. And along the way, um, our parents had taken us to a bluegrass festival for the first time. And we'd never really listened to much of it or anything, but we met some other family bands there. And uh, our dad's one of those people that gets an idea and we just make it happen. And so he thought, well, we can do this too. So he bought us all instruments while we were there. And uh, we started practicing a whole whole lot and then when he retired from the Air Force we moved to Branson and it wasn't for the music scene actually my mom's family is from around the area so we came here for that but um, we started getting opportunities to play and uh, played at some churches our grandparents church had us out there and then we entered a uh, gospel sing-off contest at sight and sound it was the cam uh, yes. sing-off yeah. and we ended up getting first place and after that the IMAX called us and we went over there and started playing and Silver Dollar City had us out ever since we moved here they've been really nice to us and I think they do a lot of that encouraging families to play music together so we'd already been practicing quite a bit we used to play at Clockers Cafe on Saturday nights when we first moved 
moved here, they just cleared off a little space in the cafe and we played there. And uh, now it's our seventh season at the IMAX Theater wow. and we're having a great time. And so yeah. your dad was like, we're gonna, it sounded kind of spontaneous. It like was he very, just, very <laughs> and we what, were what were you guys shocked. thinking of this? Like, were you like, we wanna do it or were you like, ah, we don't really wanna do this? At first, we were not super excited. I was 13, and playing the banjo is not the coolest <laughs> thing for a 13-year-old girl to do. But now we love it. You know, it takes yeah. a couple. It took a couple years for us to kind of get over the hump. But and we actually liked it before we admitted we liked it because we were still <laughs> like, okay, it doesn't seem cool. We think it's cool. But when we moved to Branson, uh, people are just so friendly here. We started getting plugged in a lot. And, and, and so Branson yeah. has a big bluegrass festival and out at Silver Dollar City. And so you it guys is. played that besides your regular show. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Every yeah. year we go out for a yeah. few different dates out there and yeah. play at one of the shows. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I, I have to mention that their siblings are out here in the audience, and I didn't want them to feel slighted. <laughs> I'm not going to show them to you, but <laughs> Matt and Julie Ann, I wanted to get that right. They're sitting out there in the back, and they're kind of harassing them on the side. <laughs> so um, anyway, we got that taken care of. So <laughs> the parents Check. were in the band as well. Now, are they yes. still in the group, or are they kind of retiring? Know, off and on they are. Um, my dad still has a real job, as he says. He, we call <laughs> him our band sponsor. Because <laughs> he's a doctor, right? Yes. yes. Something and like that. And our mom, of course, homeschooled us all growing up. And now um, she actually has been playing with us quite a bit. She's She started out on the mandolin, and she taught Julianne how to play that. And now she's kind of playing the bass with us. So we're having okay. a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. So, Ellen, you you went big time. Talk to us Did about <laughs> talk to uh, talk to us about this American Idol experience that you had because you, I mean, you represented Branson very well. Thank you. Well, um, American Idol came to Branson on the bus tour um, a few years ago, and I had just graduated from C of O, and we a bunch of us just went out for fun to audition because it was right here and. I ended up making it um, to Kansas City, and then they showed my audition there, and I made it through Hollywood Week, and then um, I got to the top 48, so right before the voting round. Top 48, yeah. so that's pretty amazing out of tens of thousands of auditions. And so who were the judges when you were there? Uh, Keith Urban, Harry Connick Jr., and Jennifer Lopez were mm. the judge, celebrity mm. judge panel. And so what, what was that like? It was, it was honestly a great experience. I grew a lot as a performer, and I think our family also grew a lot in just mm -hmm. um, learning how to take things kind of to the next level of professionalism. And then um, the judges were honestly very sweet. They told me very encouraging things, and everyone was very nice throughout the whole process. So, so it was great. So did it, did it open any doors at the end of the day, or was it did it not really change much? I think it's opened a lot of doors. It honestly just it helps having recognition for something and I think God has definitely used it to open a lot of doors for speaking with people. Um, Joe Wyatt out at Canacook had me come out and speak for a summer to the campers just oh, about my cool. experience and so I think more than music wise it's just opened a lot of doors for like our faith and like the purpose behind why we play music awesome. more than just like making it big time or anything like it that. It really helped so. us as a band reestablish our purpose and the real motives behind what we do and why we do it, so. Okay, so tell me what's that real purpose? Well, um, our purpose as a band has always been to encourage um, not only the body of Christ, but also families. And that's something our dad started too, is he, he loves having something for a family to do together. And that doesn't have to be music at all. Um, when we used to go to a lot of churches, we'd talk with families all the time and encourage them to pick a hobby or um, a service project to do together because you know you you do so many individualized things. There's not really as much of a family unit, and so we've had a lot of fun encouraging that and really encouraging other believers um, to just enjoy their walk with God. And you know, music can open a lot of doors with its message too, where you can't walk up and have a hard conversation with someone about something mm -hmm. they're going through, but you can sing a song about it. And and that's been one of my favorite things is people come up to us after we're done playing and they'll um, share something that they're going through or share how something we said or did encouraged them and reminded them of things that were good in their life or um, growing up with their siblings. And it's, it's actually been really awesome. That is, so. that is great. And you know, yeah. I, I always tell people music is extremely powerful and it can be used for good or evil. And so it's great to see you guys using it for good and we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a moment. Or would you make welcome the Peterson family?
Welcome back. We're talking to the Peterson Family Bluegrass Band, and we have Katie and Ellen here. It's good to have you guys back Thank again for you. this segment. And you guys just like flew in, what, last night or a couple days ago yeah. maybe from last night. Ir Ireland? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you did a tour. You did a world tour. Talk about that. So or, well, yeah. at least. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> our second tour over there. We went in 2015 the first time and performed, and it was just Matthew, Ellen, and I that time, but the guy who booked us over there had us back. And uh, yeah, we got back last night around midnight, so that was a lot of fun. Awesome. And uh, yeah, played a lot of bluegrass and of course did touristy stuff too. Yeah, I, so I saw some of the Facebook post and it looked like a yes. pretty cool deal. Oh, bill. from your friend. Yes, from <laughs> that friend. Yes. Yeah, um, no, it was a really a good experience. Yeah. And our whole family went this time, mm -hmm. so that was our a lot of fun. Our dad came and played the bass and our mom, helped, she k sang with us on a few songs and helped us with CDs and all that stuff. Yeah. So. so talk to us a little bit about your show here in Branson and what would someone expect to see? There's definitely a banjo. Um, there is. <laughs> no, we, we do a traditional bluegrass and also gospel stuff, and we've been working on our new album, which should be done in a couple weeks. Wow. So that's been a long process. And so that has um, about half of the album is original music. Okay. So we've been working on writing songs, and we're really excited about it. Are you going to so. put some of those in the show? Yes. Yeah, our show is a mix of like, we have some original music that we've done that's gonna be on the album, and then we play a lot of gospel and bluegrass songs, and mm -hmm. then um, it's not super planned out every single night. We honestly just have a great time being siblings and playing and hanging out on stage together, so there's lots of teasing and laughter and good bluegrass. So if someone came and saw your show one time, it might be different the next time. It will possibly. definitely be different. And you know, that's <laughs> the nice thing about bluegrass music and something we love about it is it's very laid back and um, you, you really interact with your audience a lot. And so if you find that they're really liking the old standards, then we can do that. If they, you know, want more yodeling, we put in more yodeling, you know, so happens we, all the time. we do a lot of crowd <laughs> interaction. I'm just wondering yeah. if either one of you could yodel like right now, right here. Could you do that? Could you do that? <laughs> no. You couldn't. No, it's an extensive vocal warm-up <laughs> process that I just, I don't think I could. Look, you're turning redder. I, like, she's getting redder. I don't know. I love it, though. I, I put you on the spot. I didn't tell you I was going to even ask you that, but that's okay. Uh, maybe next time. Uh, mm. Maybe we can go out and do some live video or something like that. Um, Ooh, now, that I, said, I said that I thought you guys were eligible bachelorettes. <laughs> is, that, is that true or, or not? Why don't you ask our parents about that? <laughs> Mom, Dad, I mean, <laughs> I, I send it out. Like and comment, Mom. Uh, comment below. So, but if if some guys wanted to meet you, they could come to your show. Oh, anybody can come to our show. Right. And yeah. so, when is the show, and where is it at? Well, we're playing every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at five o'clock, and it's at the IMAX Theater. There's the little Opry, so you walk in, and it's in the right hand side. And we're doing that schedule all the way through the end of October. And then November and December, we're there on Sundays at 5 o'clock. Okay. But you can always check the website. Um, mm -hmm. Ellen updates that all the time. And it's petersonband.com. Peterson and right Band. now, we're also playing, uh, we've been playing at the Wyndham Resort, too, on Wednesdays. So that's a okay. different setup. Um, but yeah. So at a 5 o'clock show, they could actually still catch another show later in the night. And the thing yeah. about that Little Opry Theater, it's kind of an intimate uh, setting. I mean, it's not like a huge thousand, two thousand seat theater. It's it's a smaller theater, so it's much more personal, right? I mean, yes, we definitely get to know our audience very well. You can interact with them and talk with them. It's it's aw it's perfect for bluegrass because it is so laid back and personal. And so uh, we love playing there. It's a blast. I think if you sit on the front row, your feet actually touch the they stage. Do. <laughs> so, yeah, we encourage people to sit in the second row and back. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's nice. And so you, besides doing the show, you also do some worship at church. And some of yes. And I've seen you more there than Ellen, but you do. I go to church more. <laughs> 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 She's just up in front of people. <laughs> Yeah. They don't <laughs> want the banjo on the worship team all the time. Oh. It's so strange. Just, you, you just need to it? rockify <laughs> the banjo. Like, make it sound like electric guitar or something. Oh. I don't know. Now, you're, uh. I, okay, you're getting your MBA right now, too. I am. I graduated so. in December with that degree. And so. you were in the medical field for a little while, also. We both actually graduated with chemistry degrees mm -hmm. from College of the Ozarks. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so I were we're using that for bluegrass. You use a lot of chemistry yeah. to play banjo. Well, that's you great. do have to have chemistry, though, as a band. Uh, gotcha. Good. That, was, that good. was good. <laughs> that was good. I liked yeah. it. Okay, <laughs> folks, this has been a fun interview. And if you didn't have fun, you must be boring. Um, because they're fun. <laughs> and so go see their show. Get to meet the other siblings. See, I think this is why we didn't put them on because now they got to see who the other two are. Yeah. And so go Ooh, see. And, and Matt, 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 are you single? No. You're not? Okay. <laughs> well, he must be taken, girls, so you don't need to go see him. But um, oh. anyway, um, so go, go to IMAX, go to the Little Opry Theater, go see the Peterson Family Bluegrass Band, and you can catch them online at petersonband.com. Yes, yes, and we've also got our Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter. So Google them, search them. You can, you can check them all out there. <laughs> and um, it's been fun. And be sure to also go to ibranson.com. You can book their show as well as lots of others on ibranson.com or call 877-ENTERTAIN. And the Southern Gospel Picnic at Silver Dollar City starts today. So you can go out there. Great Southern Gospel music, Southern cooking, Southern Gospel nights in Echo Hollow. That's always a great uh, couple of weeks here in Branson. And so this has been another edition of Play Branson. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you next week.